Hey guys, what's up? We got another video here for another upgrade on the Honda Rubicon here. Again, from Vessel Power Sports. Big shout out to them. Huge thank you. We're going to get into a how-to video, so here we go, guys. Vessel Power Sports has so much to offer for all the quads and even the side-by-sides. Foreman, Rancher, Rubicon, Pioneer, and Talon. They have a great website, it's easy to navigate, and just simply select your model and then your year. You can even get 10% off your first order by just subscribing to their email. Just type your email in, hit subscribe, then you'll always know what new they got to offer. Okay, so for the Rubicons, they got a lot to offer. They got O2 sensor deletes, tilt sensor deletes, custom headlights, LED bulbs for your stock headlights, of course, ODI grips, rad relocates, they got foot peg plates, placement parts, snorkel riser brackets, and a lot of cool parts that are exclusive to Vessel Power Sports. And even performance upgrade parts, such as axles, exhausts, and even lift portals, lug nuts, etc. Scroll down to your checkout where you can put your discount code in. Type in code TIPSY to get an additional 5% off your total order to help support our channel. You can't forget their merchandise. They got tons of cool stickers to complement your ride. Plus, they have t-shirts and exclusive holiday shirts. So don't forget to shop now, guys. Check it out. Here's my dog, best helper as always. Always down here helping. His name's Tucker. We're going to get right into it, guys. Another nice upgrade that they have it was only about thirty dollars don't forget to use our code guys on their website t i p s y for five percent off five percent off help us bring you guys more content on installing this stuff on the quads and stuff that'll help us out greatly they got their nice logo on here on this plate we got our bolt and our nut here's the back plate and a couple of the things you guys need would be if you want to use an impact gun, we need a 10 millimeter on there, flathead screwdriver, and of course, clear silicone. It's for sinks, tubs, aquariums, <laughs> plumbing, fixtures, windows, but we're going to use it on a quad today. And of course, you can't forget the sweet stickers. We got a boat money sticker from Vessel Power Sports. We got another black logo one, similar to my blue one up front. There's their blue version. Of course, the VPS, and we got an Only Boat sticker. Awesome, guys. Check out their stickers on there. They got a huge selection. Don't forget to get your hats. Here's a Mossy Oak Breakup and Tipsy Rippers, and we got a Richardson full logo. We can do the logos however you want. Different colors on the logos. We can do the big logo or the small logo, whatever you want. Okay, first things first, excuse my messy garage. We're going to take the seat off. It's kind of hard, but kind of... Pull it up, which you guys with the Rubicon or Foreman, they're all the same. There's a little tab under there. You reach your hand under and pop it out. Get that up out of the way. And then we need to get on the air box here, so we're going to open it. All six tabs. Again, I haven't changed this air cleaner in a little while. I mean, sorry, my quad's a little dirty. It's not too terribly dirty in there. So we're going to go ahead and take that out just so we have a little better access to get down in there to install this plate. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is take this off with a Phillips head, and then I'm gonna put a rag over this. Sorry, I forgot to tell you we need a Phillips head too. I thought it was a flat head, but it's a Phillips. We're gonna put a rag over this so we don't get any dirt or anything, you know, that we don't want inside this intake boot. Okay, now that we got this off, pretty simple. It could stand to be cleaned a little bit, but anyways, so, that's kind of what we're taking out down here, this tube here. It's a secondary air box. This big thing here, which I haven't had any really water problems with water getting into here. But a lot of guys just remove this because they have water leaks and stuff when they ride in the water. But we're going to go ahead and do it because um, this big bulky thing is really unnecessary and just collects a lot of dirt and debris. And you can't really wash out your brake caliper on your trans brake too good with all this in the way. So I like to keep that clean and probably make your brakes last longer. So we're going to go ahead and 
remove this now. Okay, so here's where your 10 millimeter comes in, and I'll show you real quick. There's one right there, one up there. We're gonna take that out. And I think that's really it, but I think there's a second one, and I think it's right there. Yeah, right there. Okay, so there's two. We're gonna go ahead and take them out right now. Just, I'd save them in case you wanna like resell this quad or this doesn't work and you wanna reinstall it or just to have extra bolts. Okay, so we got those bolt both out. Now there's gonna be a hose clamp up here that we're gonna to have to take out. But I think you can just, see, just pull it right out. That's not good. That's not good at all that you can pull it right out. So that's not sealed very good. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out, take that boot off of there and get that all. Look at how much room that already opened up into washing all this out. Like these, the older Honda quads that had the 304 tracks, they didn't have a secondary air box or anything like that. But if you want to, honestly, you could just put the put the bolts back in it. And then you'd always have them there. But I'm going to probably and I seize them before I put them back in. So let's get to doing this part next. Okay, so I got a light so you guys can see a little bit better. But if you look down here, right there. That was the clamp. It's also a Phillips head that held the box that holds this box on. So if you go in water any deeper than that, you were probably 100% gonna get water or mud in your air box, which I already kind of do. Like, let's see the mud in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. I think there's a second clamp on there, but I'm not sure. I don't think so, so I just pulled it off. I'm gonna save that. I try to save everything. We're going to go ahead and pull this off. My dog's trying to help. He, he kind of picked up the screwdriver for me. Great job, buddy. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that over. I need that flathead. Great job. Okay, so we loosen this clamp up a little bit. I see this is this boot's glued on here. We're going to re-silicone that. We took these pins out to help give it a little bit more wiggle room. They have this actually glued on here, this boot from the inside and outside. So you're gonna have to get a flathead screwdriver and kind of work it down in there and break the glue loose to get it loose to come out. Okay, so the best method was once you get all the glue on the inside kind of broke loose, excuse my camera footage here, you kind of get your flathead in here, break all this glue loose and just kind of push on the edge. Let me get a little bit better light here. You kind of push on the edge around this boot with your screwdriver and push it through. So now see it's completely loose. So we'll go ahead and get that out of there from the top. Put my light back here so I have some light to see. So it's completely broke free in here. Let's cover this back up so we don't get dirt and debris in there. We're gonna clean it out too. So that is what you took out. So this, see the glue? This part here was on the outside with the clamp and it was just more or less sealed through there. We're gonna go ahead, put some silicone on this plate, on the inside plate. We're gonna put this one on the outside and we got we got the bolt, which is a 13 millimeter head and a 13 millimeter nut. We're gonna go ahead and use some brake cleaner or whatever you got, maybe soap and water, lacquer thinner, brake cleaner uh, evaporates quickly. We're gonna clean this outside real good. Make sure all this glue's off here and dirt and mud and clean the inside. Then we're gonna apply our silicone on our plate, block off plate. And then we're gonna put the bolt in there and install it. Okay, so you definitely wanna See how I have it clean way out around this? Just in case. And you wanna dry fit these first. So this is gonna go on the outside, something like this. Okay. And then the inside one, if you see it's cut a little bit different, it has these notches in it. I kinda of spun it around in there to make sure which way would fit the best. It's got a couple burrs on the inside. I took them off with a pocket knife. Or you could use a file or sandpaper or whatever. But you kind of want to spin it around 
inside the box so it fits nice for you and flat. That's why you want to use a lot of silicone. Okay, so I put my light on the outside, and as you can see, this circle's like oblong, and I got an arrow on it, so that's the way it goes up. And that is the best way that it sits against this for right now by itself. Because if you look down in there, there's an indent up here where my finger is, and then over here, and you gotta make that fit into there properly. Okay, so you can use any color of silicone really you want, black, gray, whatever. I'm just gonna use clear because it's kind of see-through and less noticeable when you put it on there, and I think it looks better. So we're gonna. This is the outside one with the Vessel Power Sports logo, so we're gonna put it face down. And then this is the inside one, and I got the arrow on it, so I know which way is up. And also, I know that this is the inside, so we need to put silicone on this side. So we're going to flip it down. Okay, so I cut this at an angle, just because we do a lot of silicone stuff at work on big trucks and stuff. So I cut it pretty far down, so I want a pretty good bead on here. So I'm going to put it about halfway like in the middle pretty much pretty good bead around here make sure it gets all sealed up real good I might even do a double bead around here because it'll squish out and it'll be fine if it squishes out you know it's pretty sealed okay so hopefully we got enough on both of these and we're gonna go ahead and install them now I put a double bead on both if we need more we need more okay so I got the inside one here. Yes, I put gloves on. Have some rags handy because it's probably going to make a mess. I'm going to put the inside one on first and then we're going to do the outside. And I'm going to put the bolt through the outside and put the nut on the inside. Okay, we got the one on the inside, which you can see all the silicone in there. So I'm going to spread it around here like so with my finger make sure it gets a good seal real good I might even I'm probably gonna put some silicone on the bolt too make sure it's got a really good seal around here put the front one on and I put silicone where the bolt goes also I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on there I'm gonna stick the bolt through the hole so this may require two people to get started yep. okay It took two people to do that. So, good thing. Did you get silicone on your hands? No. I'm probably going to go back over this with silicone. Are you holding the nut still? Yep. Okay. I'll give you a wrench here in a second. It has grooves that lock on the bolt and the nut. Man, I need a longer extension. Okay. Now we'll just take the silicone and coat right over this. Real good. Okay, so it got a little messy, but I got it pretty neat in here. All sealed up. I put it around the bolt, and then I even did this again. I did it neatly, made sure I didn't get on the sensor because this did come unglued. So I neatly put it around there the whole way. And then down here got a little bit messy, but that's okay. You see it in there. Got the Vessel Power Sports logo still. Made sure it's all sealed up. Got silicone around it. I kind of wanted to keep it clean so you could still read the Vessel Power Sports, but I'd rather have it sealed so it doesn't leak. So we'll go ahead and test it out uh, this next weekend on a ride. See if it leaks. We're going to throw it all back together and hopefully... Uh, it's good, I hope it's good, but you're gonna wanna let the silicone sit at least a day to dry 
make sure everything's all good. We're going to go ahead and test her out here. But uh, that pretty much uh, finishes up the video and the install on this airbox, secondary airbox delete on this simple pretty simple it did require two people to get the bolt in and get both pieces lined up inside and outside with the silicone just to make sure it's sealed and i did put remember silicone on the outside before i put the bolt in that's another big thing you want the bolt to seal also so we'll let you know okay so i got her all buttoned back up here the air cleaner is kind of which having a honda you'd know it's kind of hard to get get it slipped back on there but it's got a like a steel sleeve inside you gotta slip it over and we we silicone this this is the next day by the way so it's all dry silicone this again so it's nice and sealed and then we got it down there all nice and sealed up <laughs> looks pretty good to me hopefully we can test it out here next weekend make sure it doesn't leak go ahead and put the lid back on which of course it's the front and put all the clips on and we're good to go and that ends this video